Hi, good evening. Ho, ho, ho. Santa Josh is here. Good evening, everyone. Merry Christmas. Wherever you are, season greetings. I hope you are doing well. I hope you had a great day and you're having a great evening wherever you are. Welcome to Contending for Dominica, your host, Joshua Francis, attorney at law. Every Sunday we meet on Facebook for this broadcast. We meet at 8 p.m. local time. Of course, some of you are in the United States of America. Some of you are in Europe. Some of you are in Dominica. And a great so wherever you are. Great evening. Wherever you are. are. I hope that uh, all is well. So this evening, once again, we have met to have a discussion. Every Sunday, 8 p.m., Joshua Francis, your host, with you, we meet to discuss issues of national importance. It's season greetings, and everybody should be in a very happy mode. It's a time to give and a time to share. We're in the last week before Christmas, the 25th of December, 2020. So some of us say it is Christmas week, and we are receiving and we are giving. And I'm so sure some of you have already done your Christmas shopping. Some of you may have given gifts already. Some of you may have received gifts. Some of you may be shopping tomorrow, Tuesday, whenever, but it's Christmas time and you are having a good time. You're happy to be alive. You're happy to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. We are giving thanks. Of course, some of you may not necessarily believe that he was born on the 25th of December, Maybe none of us believe that he was born on the 25th of December, but as Christians, most of us do celebrate his birthday, and this year is no exception. So for those of you in Dominica, you may have a more traditional Christmas. You'll be eating some beef, some pork, whatever it is, but I know that you're going to have a good time. And those of you in the metropolitan countries, it must be very cold up in the north. You will be going to the mall, get your gifts, and stay with your family, of course. During the COVID time, not much outdoor activities, and therefore you are likely to spend your Christmas inside with your family. So once again, season greetings, and welcome to Contending for Dominica. This broadcast has become your favorite broadcast over the past months. We have explored a number of national issues, this evening, we're going to explore housing. Housing. Of course, you know, we have a right to be sheltered. We, we must be protected from the elements of the weather. We must be protected from danger. And as such, housing is critical in any jurisdiction, in any country. And Dominica is no exception. The human rights, international or universal human rights, dub housing as a right it's a human right and therefore it's important it's important to us here in dominica and over the years we have had a government that has pride itself on housing it has introduced what is deemed as the housing revolution a concept which was borrowed from venezuela under the late hugo chavez administration continued by the present president, Modaro. But in Dominica, we simply said a housing revolution. We are aware that over a thousand apartments have been constructed for the people of Dominica under the Dominica Labor Party government. The housing revolution, as we see it, has spawned some controversies. We'll discuss that this evening. But we want to start by looking at the importance of housing. Um, as usual, usually I take note of our subscribers. I just want to say good evening to you and Merry Christmas, wherever you are. Uh, Irving Hamilton, good evening to you. I see that you are trying to ascertain what is the topic. I just said we are dealing with housing, the housing revolution in Dominica. I'm looking forward for you as an intellectual to take part in this discussion. 
of course. Um, Jean Jean, how are you doing? I hope all is well with you. Ronnie Ed, how are you doing? Welcome. Uh, Mr. Laville, uh, Venice, welcome. I hope you are having a good one. Do not eat too much fruit cake. Of course, we want to enjoy ourselves, but we don't want to indulge in too much sugar because we are looking out for our health. So don't, don't eat too much fruitcake. And by the way, I do like fruitcake. So if you have excess, feel free to share with Joshua Francis. And of course, the wine, you're going to have some wine as well. So all of you, welcome. We're going to have a very interesting conversation here. It is interactive, and therefore I expect you to participate in this. I'll be looking at my phone where I look at your comments. I can respond to your queries, your questions, and whatever concerns you have. This is not my program, it is our program, and our job is to look at national issues. This evening, we are going to discuss housing. So as I said, under the Dominican Labour Party government, we have seen a number of public housing, what is referred to as social housing. Social housing basically involves the creation of housing for those who are in need. It is a form of social protection. And of course, Dominica has been struck by two major disasters over the past few years. In 2015, we were affected by Tropical Storm Erica. A number of persons lost their houses, particularly persons in the southern part of Dominica. And then we had Hurricane Maria, where we had a significant devastation in our housing stock. Due to the devastation of both Tropical Storm Erica and Hurricane Maria, a number of Dominicans were left homeless. Some of us had to take refuge at relatives' homes, at friends' homes. Some people had to stay in hurricane shelters for a number of months. And through the CBI program, the government of Dominica embarked on housing revolution, whereby apartments and houses were created to accommodate those who lost their homes, those who are in need, the poor, as we say, the indigent, the low-income families. And all of us must be happy about that because imagine not having a home and then you get an apartment from the government. That is something to celebrate. Or you having a home, but when it rains, you get wet, you get an apartment from the government. You must be happy. That is something to celebrate. Or you are living with friends and family in a congested environment, you get an apartment, something to celebrate. And we have heard a number of testimonials of Dominicans throughout the country speaking of their gratitude to the government of Dominica for receiving those houses. Um, I see Ronnie, Rui, Matthew. Um, good evening, sir. Um, how are you doing? I hope all is well with you. So we are not disputing the importance of housing. As I said, housing is a human right. It's a universal human right and we're happy that we're getting those houses. As a former parliamentary representative working on the ground in Dominica, I was privileged, well, I am not too sure whether it was a privilege, but let's just say I had the opportunity to really witness the living conditions of some people as far as housing is concerned. Some people really lived in very deplorable housing conditions and the provisions of public housing to rescue persons of that nature or in that circumstances must be applauded. Of course, we have seen a number of houses and apartments constructed in different parts of Dominica. On the east of Dominica, Cassie Bruce, Grand Four, La Plain, Dalis, and uh, Grand Bay. And of course, we have seen the construction of apartments, over 300 apartments in the Bellevue area for the relocation of the PT7 residents post tropical storm Erica. So all of us must be very happy for this housing re revolution because at the end of the day, had it not be been this housing revolution, imagine many of us would still be without a house. Many of us would still be in hurricane shelters had we been permitted to stay at those hurricane shelters. Many persons who currently got apartments from the housing revolution and from the social housing would not have had a house. So we celebrate with those recipients for their homes. Now, Dominica is not the only country which provides social housing. Throughout the Caribbean, throughout the world, governments do provide for the needy, do provide housing for those who have low income 
or no income. And of course, government provides housing options and accommodations for middle-income people too. So you have different programs. So what's happening in Dominica is not new. It is not necessarily innovative as far as governance is concerned. So let me just take note of a few people here before we proceed. Natalie, good evening to you. I hope all is well. Uh, Daria, Eugene, good evening. Keep in mind, we are here to be civil. We have different opinions. We have different political affiliations, but we are not here as gladiators. We are not here to combat each other and to use caving words to disparage each other. We are basically here to have a civil discussion. I want to get your views. I want you to take note of my views at the end of the day. The purpose here is to elevate the discourse, to sharpen our intellect, intellectual skills, and to have an oversight of what is happening in Dominica. Alison, good evening, welcome. You're always present, so I'm very appreciative for your presence, and you're always interactive this evening. I hope you participate. So we are talking about housing, and I am one of them who is very happy for social housing in Dominica. I commend the government of Dominica for using public funds to provide housing to the poor. Because think about it, many of us, many Dominicans, having gone through years of unemployment, having gone through years of indigence, having gone through years of difficulties, having gone through years of no income, it will not be possible to take a mortgage from the bank. After all, we have a significant working poor population. We have uh, public servants, teachers and nurses, police officers who live from paycheck to paycheck, and some of them who have extended family commitments are not able to secure proper mortgages and the public housing provides that opportunity for them to get an apartment and of course if you're not working you do not have a job you don't have money in the bank it's going to be very difficult for you to construct a house and therefore it is only it is only right that a government that has obtained significant monies from VAT from the Chinese government, from Venezuela, and from CBI, we provide some of that funds for public housing, especially post Hurricane Maria, where you had a significant devastation of our housing stock. So if we have any recipients of an apartment or house from the government of Dominica, I say bravo to you. Those of you in the Kalinago territory, those of you in Granville who received the housing recently, and not too far away from me here in Belfast, I see the apartment at GMIT completed. I'm not too sure whether the apartments have already been handed over or whether it has not or how soon it will happen. But of course, as I stated earlier, the government of Dominica has already constructed over a thousand apartments and houses for the people of Dominica. So we are glad about that. But there are quite a number of questions, a number of questions associated with the housing revolution. And we're going to tackle them this evening. The first thing we want to tackle is source of funding for this public housing. So yes, we're happy for these apartments. Bravo to the recipients. I personally, I support the housing revolution. I'm very happy for all those who have obtained an apartment or a house. In some places you have houses being built, places like the Kalinago Territory, in other areas you have apartments. So I say, I say congratulations to you if you did or you will receive uh, a house. So we, we, we are certain about that, we are happy. But let's look at the, at the issues. So number one, source of funding for the housing program. As I said, over a thousand apartments and houses, where did the government obtain that money? Well, as you know, our government obtains money through loans, through grants, through taxes, and non-tax revenue. We know that the government of Dominica has been using revenues from the CBI, Citizenship by Investment Program. We are aware that the government of Dominica has entered into a contractual arrangement with MMCE for the construction of the apartments. That arrangement with MMC really started in 2016, 2017, when the government formalized an arrangement with MMCE, according to them, to provide the funding for the construction of the houses at Bellevue for the Pitisavan people. 
And in exchange, the government of Dominica provided citizenships for sale. So MMC provided the monies, provided the technical know-how and whatever else, whatever resources they used to construct the houses in the Bellevue area. And in exchange, they were allowed to sell a number of passports to recoup their money. Of course, in recent times, we hear of a similar arrangement as far as the clinics, the smart clinics which have been constructed throughout Dominica. Some of us have concerns about that. Now, what are, the, what are your concerns? The 80s, uh, a company headed by Anthony Hayden came to Dominica, said that he wants to give to Dominica. And according to him, he decided to meet to the government and suggested to the government that his company would build the public houses. And in exchange, he would sell, or his company as an agent, would sell our citizenship to recover money spent on those houses. And the housing revolution continues. But we have a big question here. Number one, according to the prime minister, in addition to the two traditional options under the CBI that we are aware of, that is the Economic Diversification Fund, where somebody who is interested in purchasing the citizenship of Dominica would simply make a contribution to whatever sector in Dominica in exchange to obtain his or her passport. So, for example, an Iranian who is interested in getting Dominica's passport, which would allow him to go to at least 150 countries would simply provide 100,000 US dollars plus government fees and in exchange obtain his citizenship. Now that money under the Economic Diversification Fund or the Economic Contribution Fund, according to the law, ought to be placed in what we refer to as the Consolidated Funds of Dominica. Now all Consolidated Funds are subject to parliamentary overview and is subject to the public's eye. What we have seen is the housing option has eliminated that oversight. But we're going to come to that. So that's one option. You have the EDF, Economic Diversification Fund. And then you have the other option, which is the investment option, where someone or family interested in obtaining Dominica citizenship could simply decide to invest in some eco-friendly uh, pr uh, project in Dominica. So you have several of them. You had a range for the Kempinski Hotel. You have Jungle Bay. You have Secret Bay, you know, just to name a few. So for those who are interested in employing that option, they would invest 250,000 US dollars into the investment. And in exchange, they would get shares, of course, in the project and their passport. Now, the government of Dominica, a couple of years ago, spoke about a housing option. And that is where the housing revolution is connected. That is where Anthony Hayden comes in, because the prime minister says that there's a food option. And that food option, basically, is the option whereby we presume that persons who desire to obtain a Dominican, Dominica's passport could simply make a contribution under the housing option and in exchange obtain that passport. But when that money is obtained under the so-called housing option, where does it go? Now, according to the law, under the Economic Diversification Fund, which is a contribution to the government of Dominica and not an investment project, that money is supposed to go into the consolidated funds. But somebody can debate that the housing option may be a type of uh, investment project. Somebody can also debate that the Constitution did say, or does say, that the monies, any public monies has to go to, have to go into the consolidated funds, except if there is a law which says otherwise. Well, where is the law which permits the government to facilitate MMCE to collect revenues from the sale of our passport to build houses? So that's one of the issues that we have as far as source of funding for the housing revolution. That's one concern. Number two, in view of the fact that the housing revolution, as we know it, 
involves public projects. It is only fair enough we are aware of all the numbers associated with the cost of constructing such public houses. What is the cost? After all, it's our money. Even if it's being managed by MMCE, we would love to know what exactly is the cost. How many passports sold by MMCE? What is the difference between revenue and cost? Who manages that money exactly? Is any government official a signatory to the account of MMCE for the purpose of management of our revenues derived from the sale of our passports? Isn't that a legitimate question? I think it is. Uh, let me just um, pay attention to see us what's happening here. Hi, Ms. Roll. My next mother, I hope all is well with you. Um, Mafi, Mafan Tavani, how are you, my brother? I hope all is well with you. Eve Pete, uh, good evening. I hope you're enjoying your holidays. Season greetings to all of you. God bless you all. So we're here looking at the housing uh, revolution in Dominica. And of course, we are very happy that a number of persons who have received apartments um, did get out of a deplorable situation because a lot of people were in fact living in very sad situations before they got an apartment from the government of Dominica. We're going to come to uh, several limbs of the discussion, but for now we are looking at source of funding. So source of funding, we have some concerns about the exclusive management of MMCE of our monies derived from the CBI program. We would like to know for sure with clarity how much does it cost or how much did it cost MMCE to build your apartments versus how much money they collected from the sale of our passports. Because after all, it's our citizenships, it's our passports, it's our houses, it's our money. And it's only fair enough that such a matter should be under the public eyes, should be under the overview of parliament. Unfortunately, it is not, and it raises a lot of questions. Some of us believe that there's a lack of transparency and accountability of such monies, and because it is dark because we cannot see into the room. We are of the view, some of us have the view, that it has created a room for corruption, a lot of corruption. Some of that money is possibly may be going into pockets of private individuals. Um, some of that money is, when I say private individuals, meaning that the money is supposed to go into the public stream is now under private management and because of the lack of transparency and proper accounting, it may be very well that some public officials are benefiting from the MMCE slash government contractual arrangements. A matter of fact, some critics are of the view that one of the main sources of funding for the Dominican Labour Party is from that contractual arrangement with MMCE. Hence, one of the main reasons why it is dark. They don't want us to see for sure what's happening in that hole. It is a black hole in our economy. We are not allowed to see too much. Some, some time ago in Parliament, we did get some information as to how many passports were sold by MMC. Um, this is how much money they gathered, but that is highly inadequate in respect to what we know MMC has been doing over the past few years. So that is one of our main concerns, source of funding for our public housing. And I do not want anyone to believe that questioning the source of funding, the management of the funds, the execution of whatever arrangements between MMC and the government of Dominica, clearly it's a private contract, it's been treated like that because we're not privy to the terms and conditions of that arrangement. We are not saying that we are against housing. As I said from the onset of this program, I am one of them who believes that the housing revolution has been one of the better programs employed by the DLP government in the Commonwealth of Dominica. Um, it's not anything new, it's not necessarily innovative. There are housing programs in St. Lucia, in Barbados, in St. Kitts, in St. Vincent. So every country has a, a housing program. Every country provides for social housing, which is meant to provide shelter for the needy in particular. But we are just questioning the management of our, our funds. Hi, Ivo. How are you doing? We are moving to the next limb of concerns. 
The next issue we have concern about is the selection process. So yes, the government has constructed over a thousand apartments and houses. How do you become qualified to obtain such an apartment? How? Are you supposed to be a supporter of the Dominican Labour Party? Are you supposed to be clamoring to the Dominican Labour Party? Are you supposed to be pandering to uh, government ministers? Are you supposed to show that you're unemployed? Are you supposed to show that you have been employed, but the revenues that you obtain, the income that you have, is highly inadequate to ever construct a house? Are you supposed to be of a certain family? Are you supposed to be in a certain district? The selection process. We are not fully aware up to this date exactly how the government selects persons to obtain apartments. Clearly, clearly, many of the people who obtain apartments did not have a house. Clearly, that is a fact, especially those who lost their homes because of Tropical Storm Erica and Hurricane Maria. That is obvious. Somebody has lost his house because of a storm. The government steps in to assist that person, especially if that person is unemployed, that person is indigent, that person is income poor, or that person has no income at all. In most countries, no income persons would be the first set of persons to be qualified to obtain social housing because that's the purpose, that's the objective. Social housing simply means to create houses, provide accom accommodation and shelter for those who cannot afford, who will not be able to take a mortgage. And therefore in Dominica, we have no difficulties with persons who lost their homes to obtain an apartment or a house. I am in full support of it. But beyond that, what really is the criteria to obtain an apartment? Well, everybody has his her own story. You have your own experience. You're probably aware of persons who, in your view, ought not to have obtained an apartment because that person is either employed, that person has a family who can provide, that person has a, a, a portion of land elsewhere, whatever it is. I'm sure there are stories like that. I personally have heard some of the stories that some of the persons who obtain apartments are undeserving. But I cannot say for sure that such opinions are factual. I don't have any evidence to substantiate such claims. What I am saying is that the government has not published uh, criteria for the public to fully understand how you become qualified to obtain an apartment. What we do know and what is expected, like in every country, a uh, labor right someone who supports the government, somebody who supports the party in government, is more inclined to obtain a favor as opposed to somebody who is not a supporter and both are in the same socio-economic situation. And that is expected. And I cannot say that it is wrong. The ideal situation would be that all of us who are in need would obtain but where government has limited resources, the government tends to be inclined to assist its own first. That's the nature of the beast, and it's unfortunate as the way it is, because at the end of the day, a government should take responsibility to provide for all. Had I been the Prime Minister of Dominica, definitely that would have been my strategy, to provide for everyone, irrespective of whether those who do not support me say bad things about me or not, I would ensure that all who are in need receive. As to whether the Dominican Labour Party government does that, that's questionable. Some of you may say yes, they do. Others may say no, they don't. But of course, we are moving on here. I see uh, Gregory Antoine, good evening. Keep in mind, you are free to ask questions. You are free to comment. Pulina um, Rivera, good evening. This is a discussion that we're having. It's Christmas time, of course. So we are lightening the discussion. Uh, some of you had your fruitcakes earlier today. Some of you had your wine. Some of you will be having a lot of fun over the next week. But we're here talking about housing, which is a very important subject in Dominica. Uh, whether you like the Labour Party or not, whether you are pleased with the performance of the Labour Party or not, credit must be given where it is due. I personally, I believe 
that that is one of the good things that the Dominican Labour Party employed in Dominica, the provision of housing. We have raised two concerns, though I support it, and though many of you support it, we do have concerns. So we have raised concerns in respect to the source of funding, monies derived from CBI. We are asking for better accountability so we can know for sure whether we are being cheated. The next issue is selection process. Selection process. It would have been better, it would have been more appropriate had the government provided a criteria in determination of how one obtains an apartment or a house. So those are the two concerns that we have from the onset as far as the housing situation is concerned. We are going to number three. So we have dealt with two concerns. The third concern is ownership. Ownership. Deeds, certificate of titles. We know that the government has provided keys to persons. So we have heard from the Prime Minister on several occasions in keys or handing over ceremonies where the Dominican Labour Party government would give an occupant or potential occupant a key. And you would hear the Prime Minister or the Minister of Housing say, this is your house, this is your apartment. You are no longer in a bad situation. You just obtained a resilient house. As you know, <laughs> the government of Dominica has been on a venture to become the first resilient country in the world. And the government of Dominica has been claiming that the apartments and houses constructed by MMCE under the housing revolution are resilient apartments. So persons are given a key and they're told that this is your apartment. Hi, you James. When you get a key to an apartment or house and a government official says to you, hey, this is your house, this is your apartment. Is that really true? Well, the Prime Minister and the Attorney General of Dominica both have spoken to that issue. I recall when the apartments at Bellevue were being handed over to the Pitt Savan residents, knowing that the Pitt Savan community had to be relocated due to Tropical Storm Erica, the Prime Minister pronounced very lucidly, very clearly, unequivocably, that the people of Pitt Savan would obtain their titles. Now, there's something referred to as a strata title, because you have one building with several apartments, or you may have one building with two apartments. The government desire desires to give each occupant or each household a strata title. But has that happened? Has it ever happened? Are you aware of anyone who has been in receipt of a house or an apartment from the government of Dominica, obtained a title, a strata title? Well, no. Some time ago, the question came up in Parliament and the Prime Minister, and that question was in respect to ownership. When we talk about ownership, what we are saying is that you have a title. When you own something, you can dispose of it however you want. You could sell it, you could gift it to a friend, a family member, you could will it. Now, in my research, in my readings about social housing in other countries in the world, I noted that the governments do give uh, shorter titles, they do give their deeds to the occupants subject to an arrangement. Very few countries in the world actually just give free housing. What I have noticed is that most governments enter into an arrangement where the occupant pays something. They do get their deed, but they pay something to the government. It may not be significant because this is going to take us to another discussion as far as maintenance of the apartments are concerned. You don't have a deed. Who is responsible for the maintenance of the building? But let's talk about this deed thing because it's important. It's important. So you got your key. You celebrate that you have a house. You move into the apartment. Can you wheel an apartment? 
God forbid something happens to you, you're unwell, a doctor says that you have a few months to leave. Your mother of four children, can you wheel that apartment to your children? No, you can't. You can only wheel what belongs to you. And you only know whether it belongs to you when you have a document referred to as a deed saying that you are the registered owner of that apartment. Until such time, you cannot will, you cannot sell, you cannot gift. So when are we going to see the government of Dominica actually issuing certificate of titles to the occupants in the apartments? Well, we were told that the Ministry of Legal Affairs, headed by the Attorney General of Dominica, Mr. Levi Peters, is working on the strata titles. So, of course, that has to be of concern because, yes, you obtain an apartment. You want to know that you're the owner. Hi, Sharon. Good evening. You want to know that you're the legal owner of the apartments. You do not become the legal owner until you obtain a certificate of title. As in the case of the apartments, it would be a strata title. Absent a certificate of title means that you do not have legal prowess, you don't have legal ownership, and as such, you cannot devise the property as you desire. You are what is referred to as a licensee. You're an occupant. You were given a license to occupy the property over a period of time. You may have a life interest. God forbid you do not, do not obtain a title. You're allowed to stay in an apartment until your death. Now, by virtue of the fact that these houses are owned by the state, absent a certificate of title, upon your death, the government can choose to give whoever it desires that apartment. It may not necessarily be your children because from what I understand, apart from the letter which says that you are allowed to go into apartment A, B, C, D, or E, there is no term or condition that speaks to your right as far as leasing, subleasing, as far as devising, wheeling, and so on and so forth. So that is an issue. Of course, that's the difference between public housing and private housing. Uh, an apartment under the social housing program can become a private entity, of course, but it also, uh, it also means that until you get your certificate of title, you are subject to the whims and fancies of a politician. So we are happy that the Peter Savan, the Kalinago people, the Delis people, the Casabras people, the Grandfather people, the Granby people, the Rosa people, the St. Joseph people, the Portsmouth people, just name it, obtain those apartments. But should it stop there? Are you in favor of giving titles to the occupants? Are you in favor of the occupants not paying anything whatsoever to the government of Dominica? Are you in support of that? Are you happy for the people? Do you support the government's housing revolution? Some of the questions that we are looking at this evening. Now, of course, uh, one may ask, what's my opinion? Should the government of Dominica give the occupants a certificate of title? Less, no contributions to the government treasury? Well, with the current state of affairs in Dominica, my answer is yes. My answer is yes. Most of the people who obtain the apartments are either unemployed or have very low income. And those who are unemployed are dependents on others, friends, families. Some of them are seasonal workers. Some of them are transient workers. Some of them obtain monies by little of jobs here and there. Some of them depend on remittances. So obviously, people in that category cannot afford to make a financial contribution to the government in exchange for those apartments. And here comes another set of people in a different category. They are working, but they are working poor. When they get paid, it is just to buy food, take care of their children. 
they cannot afford to pay the government of Dominica. Kaibel, she said, so does that mean they can put out your children after your death, since there's no provisional letter for your children? Yes, Kaibel, until the government provides a deed to the occupants, to these licensees, it means that the state owns the apartments. And even as we speak, if the government has a problem with an occupant, the government can match that occupant out. Keep that in mind. So yes, you obtain a key, you have moved in into an apartment, the government can match you out. It can happen. Unless if you have your deed. If you have your deed, you can stand up to the government because you are now the owner. But as long as you're a licensee, a mere occupant, it means that you're powerless as far as the dictations, the whims, the fancies, and the preferences of the government of Dominica. So yes, brothers and sisters, I was saying, hi, Henrietta, my sister-in-law, good evening, I hope all is well with you. So I was saying, yes, I do support the program whereby Dominicans in receipt of those apartments do not pay the government, those who are unemployed, and those with no income. Now, the preferred scheme would be for the occupants or licensees to pay for these apartments. Of course, not to pay the sums that we pay in our mortgage or for our mortgages. They can't afford that. But it would have been nice if they were able to contribute something monthly because the government will need money for the maintenance of the apartments and we're going to come to maintenance issues. But the bigger problem is beyond Hurricane Maria and Tropical Storm America. Of course, both storms brought many Dominicans to their knees. It brought us to our knees. And those of us who were fortunate, either we have had insurance to repair our homes. We have had savings in the bank. We have had families to rescue us. We were able to restore our housing. But many, many Dominicans who inherited houses from Papa, from Mama, unemployed, the hurricane came, destroyed those homes, and they were left Canada. The government came to their rescue, and I support that full time. They're unemployed. They don't have money to pay the government. So some of you may say, well, why is it that I have to work so hard to pay a mortgage for a house and my neighbor obtains a resilient house without having to pay a dime? Well, you're employed. Your neighbor is unemployed. As I said, the problem is bigger than the last two storms. You know what the problem is? For the past 20 years, we have had a government that has not been able to put most of us at work. That is how our country grows. The model Dominica has employed, whereby it is using a social political philosophy, providing from state hands to its citizens, all good and nice. But until the government creates the enabling environment for us to use our own hands to create and produce and export for ourselves. This current political system that is in Dominica will run to the bottom. It will crash. It's a model that has failed in many countries, especially where a country is not producing. Do you think we'll always be able to sell passports and make money and give free houses and, and, and give handouts? No, it's not going to happen. It's highly unlikely to happen. So for the past 20 years, many of us have been income poor, working poor. So we don't have money to pay the government for an apartment. That is the bigger problem. Unemployment, underemployment, low wages, low income in a country where the cost of living is relatively high. 
Yes, so um, as I said, make your contribution, comment, ask questions. We are moving on. <coughs> so, <coughs> so far, <coughs> we have raised up concerns. <coughs> we said that housing is a right, it's a human right. Every Dominican should have a shelter. <coughs> including the so-called paros on the streets. <coughs> the vagrants, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> they have a right to housing. It's a human right. It's a basic need. No one should be exposed to the elements of the weather. No one should be exposed to predators, to perpetrators, and to dangerous people. All of us should be housed our decency and dignity as citizens should be protected by the state. And therefore, it is important that a government provides social housing. In Dominica, due to the hurricanes over the past five years, the need for social housing is even greater. In an economy that is broken, in a country where production is low, in a country where the main source of public funding the CBI, of course, we need social housing. I support social housing, but I wish this government had created an enabling environment for people to work, make their own money, and build their houses as they desire. Now, we're going to come back to that. But let's look at a, another issue concerning public housing in Dominica. Maintenance. Is there a long-term plan for the management of this public housing? Right, MMC built the houses, the apartments. Keys are given to people. They're moving into the apartments. Then what happens? Fine. We said that these houses and apartments are resilient houses. After all, <laughs> we have a government that says that Dominica we will, and actually I heard a minister government saying that we are the first climate resilient country in the world. <laughs> You know, sometimes you hear certain things from ministers of government, and it's so comical. But for argument's sake, let us say these apartments are, in fact, resilient apartments, resilient houses. Does it mean that if a hurricane would strike Dominica in the next two years, God forbid, and those houses were damaged, who is going to repair them? Are the occupants responsible for their repair and maintenance? Is it the government? Have we heard of any committee responsible for maintenance? No. Let us look at Silver Lake as a model. Has any one of you been to Silver Lake recently? You are aware that there are three apartment buildings at Silver Lake, constructed from 2012. The last apartment was constructed a, a few years ago. I think they were constructed in, the last apartment was constructed in 2016, moving into 2017. Hurricane Maria came and destroyed a couple of windows of that apartment building. Are you aware that since then it has not been repaired? Isn't that an idea of the issues that will surround the apartments as far as maintenance is concerned. The maintenance requires money, isn't it? Does the government have a special fund for the maintenance of these public houses? Or is it that the government intends to give every occupant in the apartments his or her own title, and as such, these occupants then become legal owners and take full responsibilities for maintenance? And if that is the case, would it mean that these occupants' status would change, move from being unemployed to employed, from being underemployed to fully employed? Hi, Atkinson. Now that is how you measure growth in a country. You measure growth by what we refer to as economic development. And when we talk about economic development, we look at GDP, gross domestic product, look at per capita income. 
we look at economic indicators, the rate of inflation. We look at the economic sectors. Now, I do not want to sound fancy, so I'm going to keep it simple. We measure growth and development in a country against your purchasing power. How much money of your own do you have? Can you build your own house? Can you repair your own house? Can you educate your children on your own? Can you take care of your medical bills? Can you take a trip? Can you go on vacation? Can you give charity? That is how true, real, and genuine development is measured. In this country called Dominica, over the past 20 years, how many persons can you on this broadcast say that your status has improved? And if it did, considerably, how much money do you have in your bank account? Do you have a lot of money? Can you take care of your home should a disaster strike in 2021, given that your home is destroyed? Probably not. The people at Silver Lake, the people at Grand Bay, Daily, Sportsmore, throughout Dominica, obtained houses, but are they positioned to maintain those houses? Can they put adequate food in the apartments? Can they send the children to school without having to complain? That is the bigger issue here. And it's a big issue. So while we celebrate this public housing, and I celebrate it because I support it, I'm saying to you that the Dominican Labour Party government ought not to be given the kind of credit that some people are giving it. It is not for innovation those monies were obtained for the construction of those houses. Selling passports, that's a big deal. What's the big deal of selling our citizenships? And you know what? This is a, a subject that I am very passionate about, and we're going to discuss it in 2021, God's willing. Because nobody seems to be paying attention to the price that we will pay for just selling passports, selling our citizenships. Did we hear the Honorable Lennox Linton in Parliament a few days ago when he questioned the Prime Minister as to the actual number of passports sold over the past three years? Well, the estimates before Parliament suggest that, or suggested, that the government sold over 5,000 passports. Mr. Linton challenged the government that the actual number of passports sold were over 15,000 in the last three years. Now, if that is true, on average, let's lower it. Let's put it 10,000 passports every three years. We have been selling passports since 1993. And from, nine, from 2006, we have been selling passports like hot bread. Calculate it and see how many economic citizens we have. Yes, we get the money, we build houses. It comes at a price, people. There is a price. We will not pay for it now, but our children and our grandchildren will have to pay for it. So yes, these houses are coming, and we are very happy, but there is a price. And already, we have raised the concerns about transparency and accountability in respect to the construction of these public or social apartments. Some people are getting wealthy. So yes, you got your little key. Yes, you're inside. You can look at your television. When it rains, you don't get wet. But hello, that is all. Because you got this, this apartment, you, beca you became blind. Are you not seeing that when you get an apartment that somebody is getting millions? Are you not seeing it? Isn't it real in your eyes? Did you, did, are you aware of the mansion up Mont Daniel? Do you know who built it? Do you know where the Dominican Labour Party got millions of dollars to campaign in the last election? Do you know? You don't, but you can know. But you are so emotional, you got an apartment, and all of a sudden, God bless my prime minister. God bless my government. God bless Dominica. 
Mom, sir, child, for now you got an apartment. But you need more than the apartment. You need food. You need clothing. You need medicine. You need health care. So you have the apartment all good and nice. But would it have been better for you to build your own apartment? You know why you're in your 30s, 40s, and 50s and you don't have an apartment? It's because your governments have failed you. Hi, Ma Melvin. Joshua, I don't see what made the Rosen sort people choose Dawn Shakira over you. She does not have these experiences nor the knowledge that you have. She cannot represent nor can she influence anyone. I was very disappointed that our people were not to apply common sense at the last election. Ma Melvin, in Dominica, we are very emotive. And that is why I have put my voice back in the mix to help to elevate the discourse, to help disseminate information which will further enlighten our people. Because I'm here using the housing situation as an example. And I'm happy for those people. But I'm saying to you, there are fundamental concerns surrounding social housing in Dominica, and it should bother you. Yes, you get an apartment, but the people who gave you the apartments, they're getting millions, and they can build many apartments of their own. And some of these people who are enriching themselves from the sale of our citizenships, they are so wealthy that their children and grandchildren may not need to work and yet be able to live off the facts of the benefits being derived from this scheme. The housing option, as it is called by our beloved Prime Minister, appears to have created a situation where people are corruptedly getting wealthy. Be concerned about that. Be concerned about title, whether you ever become an owner. Be concerned about maintenance. Be concerned about whether you will ever get a proper job. People, I don't understand how you can be so content by having a little NEP job working on the streets in Kingfield. You're so happy. God bless my government. Is that what you're worth? Well, in a system, we must have persons to cut grass. We must have people to collect garbage, but don't you have ambition? Where is your ambition, our pride in this country? We must develop our dignity. All right, so we are looking at housing. For those of you who came in late, we are looking at the so-called housing revolution in the Commonwealth of Dominica. The government of Dominica embarked on a campaign to build houses for those in need. And I support that, and I'm happy for that. But I'm not happy that while these houses have been built, that some people have gotten fat out of what appears to be corruption. And if not corruption, clearly an unfair contractual arrangement between the operators and the government of Dominica. And that is why we do not know for sure exactly how much has it cost the operators versus how much revenue they have generated from selling our passports. I want you to think about it, people. If there is any apartment recipient on this broadcast, I say, bravo, I'm happy for you. You obtained an apartment. You did not have one. When it rained, you got wet. You lived with someone who made you feel bad. You lived in a bad situation. Now you are in a proper house. You have hot water fueled by a solar system. Great. 
You have a resilient apartment according to the government of Dominica. Great. Your children are with you. Great. You feel dignified now. Great. But you know why prior to that you could not build a house? It's because the government failed you. So why celebrate to the point where you think that your political leader is a god? He's not. He's not that innovative. If anything, we should be beyond just you getting a house. You're supposed to have a job. You're supposed to have a job. But you don't have a job. And you will not get a job with this regime because they don't have the innovation. And most of them behave like they're in a boys' club. It's about them. It's not about you. You're only being deceived. You are in a state of false consciousness. You are taken for a ride. Your emotions are being stirred. You're being blinded. You feel poor, you feel broken, you feel lost. The persons responsible to put you in that situation, they, do, they now give you an apartment and you hail them as king and queens. Step up, people. Theresa Rowe, the PT Savan residents who were relocated have to be mindful because they have some beautiful houses. Some of them are still paying mortgages. Now, that's another very interesting issue. And I'm happy that you brought that up, uh, Miss. Uh, to his role. Yes. I don't understand how a government of Dominica declared Piti Savan as an unsafe community for persons to reside. Embarked on a housing project in Bellevue for the purpose of relocation. Encourage the utility companies to disconnect their supplies of electricity and water to discourage a pity servant from going back into the geographical pity servant to reside or to recommence residence post tropical storm Erica. Yet, the same government has not made any arrangements for the mortgagers to pay off their mortgages. So you still have a number of pity servant persons paying the banks for the homes at Piti Savan. Wouldn't it have been appropriate for the government of Dominica with all that l'argent to have paid off the mortgages? Probably that would have been appropriate, right? Especially those facilities at NBD. The government could write off those mortgages without affecting people's credit Good night, Angela Paul. How are you? So, it's kind of ludicrous for the government to have moved the people from PD7, caused utilities to be disconnected from the PD7 area, and yet it has not properly and adequately addressed the mortgage issues. But you know what is going to happen, right? Once there is a change of government, the PD7 road will defini definitely reopen and many of the PD7 residents now residing at Bellevue in the MMC constructed apartments will return to PD7. It's going to happen, it's just a matter of time. And then all these efforts to make PD7 obsolete will be reversed and then we'll look back and we'll question the judgment of these governments. Why cause the people to leave their community where they are sentimentally connected to go to Bellevue when at some point they're going to go back? But that's another uh, issue by itself. So once again, um, for those of you who came in late, welcome to Contending for Dominica. This is your program held every Sunday from 8 p.m. The objective is to examine, cogitate, and develop 
national issues. This evening we are looking at social housing in the Commonwealth of Dominica. The need for social housing. What has happened with the construction of the houses, social housing? The so-called housing revolution, are you in support? Are you not? If you are, do you have concerns? I am in support, but I express, I have expressed a number of concerns. Um, if you have any questions, please go ahead. If you have any comments, please go ahead. Of course, we did not look at the legal organs and instruments surrounding the public houses. Of course, you have several components in the entire program working as a team. You have planning division, you have the housing board, you have uh, the, the housing division, you have the minister of housing, and so on and so forth, responsible for the management of public housing. Hi, Al Charles, good evening. We have spent over an hour in communication and interaction discussing public housing in Dominica. We are very fortunate to be in a country where CBI funds have been so large, so huge, so enormous, that we're able to construct houses and give it to our citizens who in return does not need to pay, do not need to pay, sorry, a cent. We are very fortunate. In most countries, a government embarks on construction of social housing requires people to pay back something. In this country, you don't need to pay a dime. In some cases, all you do is jump around. Even if you have a house, but you may want another one because you think that where you are is deplorable, and maybe it is. You check your parliamentary representative. You speak to the Minister of Housing, and you may get an apartment because we're not aware exactly what is the criteria, what exactly are the conditions that you must satisfy for you to get one of these apartments. Al Charles, you said, I am not in support of the building apartments in the rural areas. Well, yeah, that's a concern. I did not discuss it, but you have raised it. I've heard concerns. Some people have the view that the apartments in rural areas is an obliteration of traditions in the rural areas. And one of the traditions would be backyard gardening having your little space, being able to go on your veranda and look at your neighbor, look at people walk on the streets, being able to plant your sorrel in your yard, put your little banana tree in your yard, plant your little dash in, in your yard, having control over your yard. When you go in these apartments, you become less independent. Your space becomes congested and your independence and control is diminished. You don't have backyards. Neighbors are in your space. Certain things that you could do in your yard, you can no longer do it in the apartments. But such is life, you have to pay a price. You can't have everything perfect. You lost your home due to Hurricane Maria. You get a free apartment, no complaints. But should it end there and all of a sudden you hail the government of Dominica as the best government? You hail the prime minister as a superstar, as a political god? He's so immovable. I say no, that is wrong. An apartment is not enough. Furthermore, government is responsible to provide housing. Every government does it. It happens at different scales with different terms and conditions. But given the kind of monies that this government has obtained over the years, we should get more than free apartments. We should get more. And I want you to ponder on that. Well, as usual, we do not go too long. Uh, today is Sunday. You have things to do. It is Christmas time, Christmas week and you want to enjoy yourself we have been here for the last hour and 15 minutes 
we're going to wrap up. I just want to remind you that we want to select a personality of the year 2020, someone who was impactful, someone who made a profound contribution to Dominica over the past 12 months, someone who has left a mark on the face of Dominica constructively and positively. I presented two names, Ms. Kyra Schillingford for her contribution within the jurisprudence. She fearlessly represented litigants against the state and she has provided representation at the highest court in our land, that is the Caribbean Court of Justice, and she has had success. She has represented the opposition in a number of cases, namely the more popular and known case, the treating case, which is not before the Caribbean Court of Justice for Judgment, that we will dissect in a subsequent program. So I believe Ms. Kara Schillingford has done very well, and she deserves to be recognized for her impeccable work as an attorney and as a person someone with exemplary qualities, very warm, God-fearing, very brilliant, fearless, and represents her clients zealously. I'm of the view she should be recognized and should be given the title Woman of the Year, if not Person of the Year. Then I also believe that Dr. Irvin McIntyre has presented himself formidably as a minister of government in terms of management of COVID in Dominica. And I'm looking at the management of COVID from a health perspective, not from an economic perspective, because of course, COVID is multifaceted. It is not just the health aspect and the social aspect. There's an economic aspect to it. And we are cognizant that many countries have implemented a stimulus package to help protect those who lost their jobs, those who have been financially struck adversely by COVID to sustain themselves. In Dominica, we have not benefited from such a package. So Irvin McIntyre, Dr. Irvin McIntyre has been recognized mainly for the management of the health aspect of managing COVID. All right, I believe that he has done well as a minister of government. He comes across as gentle, of course, knowledgeable on health. After all, he has been a doctor for many years. It would be very unfortunate if we have a medical doctor being a minister of health, not having the competencies to understand what he's doing unlike most ministers and governments, given portfolios for which they have absolutely no real knowledge. They don't have the experience. They don't have the intellectual capacity. They are intellectually vacuous. They lack innovation. They lack the political will. They lack the political prudence. They lack proper leadership skills, yet assigned responsibilities to manage a ministry. Some of these people will not get a chance in most countries. But that's what we get in a country where people are more emotive than rational. So let me just uh, recognize a few of you all here before I make my departure. I see Barry Smith. Good evening. How are you doing? Ensign Williams. Good evening. Winston Warrington. Good evening. Gerald Dossett. Good evening, my brother. I hope all is well with you. I'll stay, I'll see soon. Hi, how are you? Uh, of course, uh, Miss Rule, Laura Anthony. Yeah, Lisa, I hope all is well with you. Angela Paul, I hope you're doing well. Vico, my brother, I hope you're doing great. Al Charles, and the former parliamentary representative for the Wesley constituency, the honorable, great Peter Carbon a man for whom I have admiration, very sound in his reasoning, grounded, and caring for the people of Dominica. Good evening, 
We came in just when we were about to depart. I mentioned that we want to select a personality of the year in our broadcast contending for Dominica. We meet every Sunday from 8. We are at liberty to go on to 9 and 10 and 11. But of course, I, I think that I have said quite a lot. The opportunity is now yours to comment, to punctuate your ideas, to stir your issues, to ventilate your thinking in respect to housing in Dominica. I sum up by saying that I vehemently support the housing revolution. I believe that is one of the few good things that this government has done to create a marked difference in the lives of our people. And whether you like the Dominican Labour Party or not, you have to support when someone receives a house, a house, a home, it's a right. It is undignified for any human being, whether in Dominica or a neighboring country, to be getting wet when it rains. So I'm very happy for those who are now dry when it rains. I'm very happy. Vanya Schillingford, Carol, Vanya Schillingford. Yes, Al, she has done very well. So we support the housing revolution, but we don't support certain things associated with the housing revolution. We do not support the lack of accountability and transparency. We do not support the inequality in the distribution of funds generated from the so-called housing option. We do not support the dubious policy in the selection process and the management of the apartments. We do not support the inequality, the unjust and unequitable distribution of apartments if it exists in, in Dominica. What we support is transparency, we support accountability, we support equitability, we support even distribution of public resources in the Commonwealth of Dominica. That is what I support. And I say I because I'm speaking for myself, and that's why I'm here contending for Dominica. All of us contend in one way or the other. Some of us are careless. Some of us are in a state of false consciousness. Some of us are selfish. Some of us live for immediate gratification. Some of us are spiritually blind. But I want to believe that most of us are enlightened. Most of us are visionary. Most of us are positive. Most of us stand for truth. Most of us stand for righteousness. Most of us stand for what is good, sound, pure, holy, innovative, progressive, developing, to name a few. Once again, people, this is Joshua Francis, your host, contending for Dominica. We meet at 8 p.m. every Sunday. Of course, after today, we have one more Sunday, and we'll be having a year in review. We're going to review the year. We're going to look at the different sectors of Dominica. We're going to measure the performance of this incumbent government. We're going to look at the ups and downs in Dominica. We're going to review Dominica's performance over the last year. I would expect you to participate. I do want you to participate. This is not about Francis. This is about us. We're here to interact. We're here to discuss. We're here to elevate the discourse. We're here to contribute to the intellectual pool in Dominica. We're here to lend our voices to make a difference. Viva Mamo! My dear Facebook friend, someone who I have great respect for as an intellectual. He spends a lot of time researching. Yes, like all of us, he has his preference, but he comes across as being very objective. 
And what I like about Bifa Mambo is that he supports his opinions with facts. So here we go, Viva Mamo. Generally, Dominicans are not opposed to the housing revolution and many other initiatives, such as building an international airport, construction of health centers, granting scholarships to students, etc. No, the issue. All of the above must be examined within the context of good and accountable governance, which is lacking in Dominica. Mm -hmm. Viva Mamo, I share the same view. I affirm your statement. I celebrate your statement. Your statement is on point. I shall go on to the mountain top to echo your statement. It's a statement of truth. It's a statement of fact. We do support all the goods emanating from the sale of our passports, whether it's for housing, smart clinics, scholarships. But we have a problem with the management of the funds. Laja, we have a problem. It appears some people are getting fat and they're keeping us in the dark as far as how much they collect versus how much they spend. We have our suspicions. We may not have the evidence to cause criminal prosecution of the actors and players milking the system. But after all, we can draw natural pointed inferences that some of these people are benefiting under the table. Example one, where did the Labour Party, Gov Labour Party obtained millions of dollars for his campaign. Where? Where did that money come from? Having listened to a number of people, we have the view that one of the sources, CBI money. That is what we are concerned about. That is one of the things we are concerned about. We cannot be in a country which we hail as a democracy in the 21st century. And we behave like we do not care about the management of our funds. We cannot and should not allow people to control what belongs to us in a clandestine nature. When people do things in the darkness and they don't want to come out in the light, it is because their conscience would be injured if they come out in the light. In simple terms, darkness breeds immorality such as theft. That is what we suspect is happening within the scheme surrounding the so-called housing option. So Viva Mamo, I commend you for your persistence, your perseverance, your sustainable interest in the development of Dominica. I do not know you personally, but commendations to you, sir, or lady, whoever you are, May you continue to drive the vehicle of substance on Facebook for the benefit of your readers. Yes, Mr. Rizzo, we are going to wrap up. Once again, I want to say season greetings to all of you. Ho, ho, ho. I hope that your season thus far has been fruitful, productive, cheerful. As the good book says, it's better to give than to receive. So give something. I know a lot of us do not have the financial means. Christmas 2020 resulting from a dampened global, regional, and local economy exacerbated by an incompetent government that has not been able to create jobs and create a higher standard of living, hence limited disposable income. We're in the Christmas week, and many of you were not able to substantiate your fridge with a lot of drinks and meat and fish because you don't have it and it's not because of covid only it is because we have had a government that has saddled our country with a lack of productivity a government that has not seen the need to stimulate our economy hence 
causing the different economic sectors to be alive and well, to produce jobs, to increase exports, to increase foreign exchange, to increase salaries and wages. I end our program, our broadcast this evening by reminding you that in our region, Dominica has the smallest economy, the weakest economy, the highest rate of underemployment and unemployment, the lowest wages and salaries, the lowest foreign exchange. And mind you, the construction of Kempinski and other hotels on the island will not solve our economic holes in a hurry. Even the pending construction of the international airport, though a very transformative economic move, will not solve Dominica's economic problems in a hurry. Our national debts continue to increase while productivity is dropping. The capital projects which is taking place in Dominica, in most countries, it will be a boost for the economy. Here, the multiplier effect from these capital projects is relatively small. You know why? Because most of these projects are handled by foreigners. Capital flight. Revenues are sent abroad. The capital projects done by the Chinese are even worse. The Chinese are paid in China. Their monies go back to China. And they don't contribute to our local economy significantly because they bring containers of foods. So the multiplier effect is lessened. So on paper, on paper, the monies that we spend in the economy makes it appear that we are realizing economic growth sometimes. But in reality, on the ground, it's a no-no. You hear any complaints? Bus drivers hustling, having difficulties paying for the, their bus loans. Mortgages complaining. I see salary slips from public servants after they pay their mortgages, their car loans. Sometimes they go only for $150 a month. That's the reality. Even lawyers are crying. That's the Dominica that we have. And it's, it's, it, it, it creates a lot of angst in my system when I hear people talking about Roosevelt's character as some kind of visionary leader. He's not. That, that is one of the biggest deception and biggest political fraudulent construct that has landed or descended in any mind in the world. And one of the reasons I'm here contending for Dominica is to obliterate this crooked thinking. We are led by a gentleman and an administration that has lacked the competence, the genuineness, the political will to really create a better Dominica. But of course, I do not want to continue because I've been here for an hour and 41 minutes. I just want to say thank you for being here with me. Hi, Veronica, Pascal, good evening. God keep you, protect you, and bless you. Uh, make your contribution to your neighbors, to your family, love starts at home. You know, take care of your mommy, you know, your granny, comb her hair, do her hair, cut her nails, clean her yard, clean her kitchen. You may not have money to give, you may not have a cake to give, you may not have a card to give, but give the most important thing, an act of love. So for those of you who have not shown love to your family, take the next few days and show love to your spouse, to your children, to your parents, to your grandparents, to your friends. And yes, to me too, I want your love. <laughs> and you have my love. My love to you and my love for you. It's always a pleasure to be with you, Dominica. We are one. We may have our differences. But love for our country, love for our people, and love for one another keep us together. I continue to urge all opposition forces to speak, whether with your pen, whether with your tongue, whether with your music, whether with your prayers, whether with your visions. Speak as a collect. Let us get it done. Let us not give up. It's a struggle. 
Keep in mind that our ancestors who brought freedom to us, some of them had to lose their lives. Some of us have suffered to get, get here. But our pain and sufferings must not go in vain. We must keep the fight. In our quest to get real economic, social, political, and spiritual development in Dominica, we do need a change. And that change will only come through continuous, persistent, and genuine advocacy. And that includes education, enlightenment. Let us get it done, people. At least a good night. So, once again, always a pleasure. I had a good one with you. We are going into 2021 with a lot of happiness in spite of our situations. Merry Christmas to you. God bless you. God keep you. God protect you. All right. Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Good night.